Skogestad's half rule is a systematic way of reducing the order of a transfer function. I'll explain how to apply this method using this example. In order to apply the method, we have to have a target function, which we are going uh, to approximate to, and we have to have written our transfer function in a time constant gain form. So the given transfer function uh, actually has a gain of 1 and we have to remember that there is a minus 1 time constant um, in the numerator as well. Once we have written the transfer function in gain time constant form it becomes very easy to handle uh, the gain part. So we can immediately write down the gain of this transfer function is 1. For the other three parameters, I'm going to create a table showing the date time, the first and the second time constant. In Skorgestad's method, we first identify the time constants that will be retained. Notice that we've written the transfer function in descending time constant order. In other words, the large time constants appear first and the small time constants come after. This makes it easy to identify which time constants to retain. We'll simply discard the lower uh, time constants and retain the high time constants. Also notice that in this transfer function there is no dead time. So we can start our table showing a zero time uh, delay and using 12 and 3 for our initial uh, values for the first two time constants. The next step in the method is to take into account the neglected dynamics. So this is the retained uh, part because that's the part that we are uh, going to have mirrored in our target function and all of these will be uh, neglected. I've written down the neglected time constants in rows of their own so that we can fill in our table. We also need to take into account the right hand plane 0, which we will also neglect, which has a value of, or a time constant value of minus 1. The method specifies that the first neglected time constant is split evenly between the time delay and the smaller time constant. The remaining time constants are all added directly to the time delay. Now that we have all of our neglected terms uh, taken into account, we simply sum all of these effects leading to a time constant of 3.1 a time constant of 12 and a time delay of 1.15. And there you have it. We've now developed our uh, approximation. We can write everything in the right place. To summarize the method, we will first write our system in time constant gain format. The method is easier to apply when we write the time constants in descending order so that we have the large time constants in front and the small time constants at the bottom. We'll always retain the larger time constants that match up with the target form. We'll figure out the gain by writing the system in gain time constant format and we'll start out with these initial values filled in. So the retained time constants go over here. If there were any dead time over here, it goes there. We then add half of the first neglected time constant to the dead time and half to the smaller time constant of our approximation. We add the remaining neglected time constants directly to the delay and we also add the right hand plane zero time constant to the dead time. Once we've done this, we add all of these effects together and we write it in our final form.